So the last time we were together, we mentioned that in understanding the complex number lab, it's important to understand that numbers like 3 or 4i, this is not only a real number, but it's also a complex number. And 4i is not only an imaginary number, it's also a complex number. And a number like this is just a complex number. So if we look at it that way, we would say that in terms of a Venn diagram, we would say that the whole circle representing all the numbers, that would be complex. And then we could have other circles in here, one that represents the real and another that represents the imaginary part like that. And that these circles are inside the bigger circle. They're not ex uh, outside the, the scope of the, of, the, of the complex circle. In other words, it, it's not like this. It's not like this, it's like this. So with that in mind, you should come up with an inheritance hierarchy that looks like this for your complex number lab. So we have complex number class up here, and then we have real and imaginary that inherit from complex number. We would say that a real number is a complex number. So these arrows, which imply inheritance, show is a relationship, is a relationship. And so looking back, I've given this lab for several years, and there are two common mistakes that students make when they're working on this lab, and I want to go over them with you today to make sure that you don't make these mistakes. I think most people, when they build a complex number class, they realize that they need two attributes, a real one and an imaginary one. And you don't need to build separate ones for decimal ones versus in integer ones. Just build the decimal one alone. So just use double here. And, and that will be su uh, sufficient. If, if they call the, the constructor with, uh, with, with something like this, the compiler will be smart enough to convert the integers into decimals for you. It will do that. It won't go the other way, but it can take integer numbers and convert them to decimal for you automatically. So the trouble usually starts when you have to create the real and imaginary classes. And a lot of times what I see happen is that when you go to create the real class, you, you realize that you need to deal with this variable that's in your parent class. But then when you go to access it, you run into trouble. Why can't you access this variable directly from this class? Mr. Sneed, it's private. So what do you do? You say, oh, I can fix that. And you just go and you change this to be public. That's a problem. In, a computer, in an AP exam, that would be a pretty significant deduction. The reason why we have private in the first place is that we, won't, we don't want other classes to directly access our attributes. We want to have some control over it in this class here. And so changing these to public would kind of defeat the entire purpose of setting up the inheritance hierarchies and encapsulating the data with this private modifier to keep other classes hands off. So first hint, don't make these public. So then what happens is students look at this and say, oh, well, I can't make it public. I know what I'll do. I'll recreate the variable here. So then they go public, sorry, they go private, double, real, over here. So what they've done is that they have taken functionality that was already provided and working perfectly, and they've duplicated it here because they were having trouble getting access to this variable. Try to understand that even if you get your code working with this strategy, it's still going to be a really bad grade because this is showing me that you don't really understand what inheritance means. The idea behind inheritance is that you want to inherit from your, from your parent class. See this inheritance right here. And by doing so, you want to take advantage of all the code that's already been written and debugged. And you don't want to duplicate the functionality here. So this is also the wrong thing to do. And now, now comes the right way. What is the right way to access this variable from this child class, Ms. Sria? You need to use the getters and setters to access this. So in here. When you build this class, you need to build a get real, and you need to build a set real. And once you get, 
once you realize that you can use these methods, because these methods are public, right? Only the data is private. You can use these methods in this class to do whatever you need to do to this variable. And that's the right way to code the lab. In the imaginary class, you do a similar thing with the imaginary part of the parent class. So the other thing I want to mention is that most of the time when we have parent and derived, a parent and child classes, the, the two strings tend to be shorter higher up the inheritance hierarchy. Like here, you'll have a two string. Then here, you typically have a longer two string. On this lab, it's kind of backwards. Here, you have the full-blown two string with the A plus BI. And here, you want to override the two string so that only this part shows. Likewise, you want to override the two string over here so that only this part shows. And inside the two string, once again, the way you get access to these variables is by using these methods. So that's kind of the idea behind the lab.